Okay, so today we're going to be discussing mass, moles, and the empirical formula. This is an invaluable chapter at tackling and handling chemical problems. And it's really your foundational exposure to mass mole conversions. So let's talk a little bit about let's talk a little bit about atomic mass. So particles have characteristic mass. So to use a more tangible real world example, suppose we have a penny and this penny weighs one weighs three grams. So we can set this up as a conversion factor. We know that in one penny, there are three grams of that material. We also know that there are three grams per every one penny. So we can use this conversion factor to calculate the number of particles in a mass. So for example, if we're asked how many pennies are in 36 grams, so in effect, we're going in our conversion scheme from grams to pennies, okay. So if we have 36 grams and we want to go to pennies, what units would we want on top? what units would we want on top in our conversion factor? Pennies. Yep. So if we have one penny, that weighs three grams. Grams cancel, and we see that we'd expect there to be 12 pennies in 36 grams. So we can apply the same unit conversion logic to a range of questions. Um, I saw a question in the chat about our discussion of the practice exam. Uh, the practice exam is just for your reference. It doesn't affect your exam score um, in the slightest. So I have posted a, a Word and a PDF document of the practice exam for you to study. And then the actual exam is created as a Canvas quiz. So the practice exam is just for your reference to attempt. Mm -hmm. So what's really important to keep in mind is that the same mass does not represent the same number of particles. So for example, one quarter weighs six grams. This is an analogy. So in 36 grams of quarters, we, we will see and we can calculate the number of quarters. So we have six grams for every one quarter. And we know that one quarter weighs six grams. So then to calculate the number of quarters in 36 grams, we're gonna go from 36 grams to quarters. And we know starting with 36 grams, to go from grams to quarters, we want the units of quarters on top. So we know that one quarter weighs six grams, grams cancel, and we see that there are six quarters. Now, the critical idea from this whole set of examples is this idea that the same mass of material does not correspond to the same number of particles. So depending on the mass of your particle, such as your atomic mass, the same overall mass of sample can hold a different number of particles. Okay, so let's keep going with this idea. So what is the mass of our fundamental particles that we're dealing with? So atomic mass is the mass of an atom. So the periodic table gives the atomic masses of the elements in, in units are AMU per atom. Okay. 
Atomic mass provides us the means to count atoms by measuring the mass of a sample. So again, atomic mass has units of AMU per atom, where an AMU is a very small number of grams. Okay. So, in this next example, let's try to figure out how many atoms of hydrogen are found in 30 AMUs of hydrogen given its atomic mass. So reading off from the periodic table, we see for hydrogen, we have one AMU per one hydrogen atom. We can equate this to 1.67 times 10 to the negative 24th grams of hydrogen for every one hydrogen atom. So remember this number below the symbol is our atomic mass, which represents the mass of a single atom in units of AMU per atom. So we're given the mass in AMUs and we wanna calculate the atoms. So we're going from AMU to units of atoms. Okay, we can do that. So then if we start with 30.0 AMUs of hydrogen, we know that one AMU is present for every one hydrogen atom. So then if we wanna go from AMUs to atoms, what units need to be on top? What units need to be on top? We're going from AMU to atoms, just like our previous unit conversions. What units need to be on top of this expression? Atoms, yep. So in one hydrogen atom, we have one AMU. AMUs cancel, and that gives us 30.0 hydrogen atoms. Now, one thing that I want you to pay attention to is I label what atoms I'm referring to, in this case, hydrogen atoms, and I also label what mass I'm referring to. This is AMUs of hydrogen. That's really important because you can only use the atomic mass to calculate the number of particles if your sample consists of that element and it contains that element only. Let's do another example. So in this case, we're asked to figure out what is the mass of 30 AMUs of hydrogen in grams. So let's write our conversion. So we know we have 1.67 times 10 to the negative 24th grams per one AMU. Okay. In terms of our conversion, we're going from AMUs of hydrogen to grams of hydrogen. Okay. Whoops, one moment. So with this, starting with our 30.0 AMUs of hydrogen, if we're going from AMUs to grams, what units need to be on top? If we're going from AMUs to grams, what units need to be on top? grams. So we have 1.67 times 10 to the negative 24th grams per one AMU. And if we punch that into our calculator, we in turn get 5.01 times 10 to the negative 23rd grams. Any questions on this example? If not, let's try to apply what we've covered into a series of examples. But before we do that, I just wanted to give everyone a reference. So above these problems is a periodic table which has all of our, all of our atomic masses. You're welcome to print out a larger version of this periodic table. 
provided on other pages in the Canvas notes. Um, I just wanted you to have this here for your reference. Okay, so let's look at these problem solving sessions and say, and I'd like you now to work on the following two examples. The, the Canvas quizzes associated with this note set will be posted later tonight. So that way, after attempting these problems once in class, you can reattempt these problems again at home. And that way you can check your retention of the material. So let's spend about three minutes working through these two examples, and then we'll discuss momentarily. And please provide your proposed responses in the chat, just so that way I can check to see how everyone's progressing through the material. The Canvas quizzes associated with this note set again will be posted later tonight for you to reattempt the material and further practice the material found in these problem solving sessions. I'm seeing some reasonable responses so far. Um, to answer the question in the chat, I'm not sure. I would check to see if Canvas messages are forwarding to your personal email. Otherwise, I can I can send you the 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 link via email each time we start a session. Let's try to get a few more responses. And don't be shy to unmute and share your responses um, or to type your responses publicly or privately in the chat. The responses I'm seeing so far look pretty good. Let's try to get a few more responses in the chat and then we'll discuss. So I'm seeing a lot of reasonable responses. Let's spend about another minute on this problem and then we'll discuss momentarily. Let's try to get about one to two more responses and proposed solutions in the chat. Good, the responses I see so far look quite reasonable. So let's get started and let's look through the following two examples. So we're asked to figure out the mass and AMU of 16 atoms of carbon. So we're going from atoms of carbon to AMUs of carbon. Okay, so we have 16.0 atoms of carbon and we know that for carbon, if we go to our periodic table, carbon has a mass of 12 AMU per atom. So let's use that. So one, so one atom of carbon 
is equal to 12 AMU. So then if we're going from atoms to AMU, we know that there are 12 AMUs of carbon for every one carbon atom. Now we can punch that into our calculator really quickly. So 16 times 12 gives us 192 AMUs of carbon. Perfect. Any questions on this first example? So the key thing is you want to make sure your units cancel. Let's look at the next portion. We we're asked to calculate the mass of 12 grams of oxygen in AMU. Okay. So in this case, we're going from grams of oxygen to AMUs of oxygen. So we know that one AMU is equal to 1.67 times 10 to the negative 24th gram. So if we're starting off with 12 grams, we know that in one AMU, we have 1.67 times 10 to the negative 24th grams. Grams cancel. And punching this into our calculator, and this is really important. You want to enter this bottom number. Anytime you have a number times a power of 10, you enter the entire thing in parentheses. So this may be why some of your numbers seem a little different in magnitude than mine. It's likely because the power of 10 was in none the correct, not grouped together in the calculator. So if we punch this in the calculator, we'll get 7.185 times 10 to the 24th grams, which we then round to two sig figs to get 7.2 times 10 to the 24th grams. Now don't worry, we'll be doing a lot of practice with these types of conversions. This is our introduction to mass particle conversions. Any questions on these examples? Any questions on these examples? And really don't be shy to ask. Hi, I'm confused on the first problem, how you got the 12 AMUs. Ah, yes. So the atomic mass of an element is given in the periodic table under the element symbol. So for example, 12.011 would be the atomic mass of carbon. Just like in our example for hydrogen, our mass of hydrogen was about 1.007 AMU. So what you're gonna do to figure out the atomic mass is you're going to look at the periodic table. You're going to find your element. You're then going to go straight to the number under your element symbol. In this case, we see 12.00 AMU is the atomic mass of a carbon atom. And that's the equality that we use to then go from atoms of carbon to AMU. Because if we have 16 atoms and each of those atoms has a mass of 12 AMU, then we have a total mass of 16 times 12, which is 192. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Uh, to explain one more time for the second example, so we're going from grams to AMUs, right? And we know one AMU is 1.67 times 10 to the negative 24th grams. So then if we start with 12 grams of material, to go from grams to AMUs, we want AMUs on top, grams on the bottom. And so we have 12 grams over 1.67 times 10 to the negative 24th gram per AMU. The power of 10 is kept with our number, so we enter this in our calculator in parentheses. And as a result, we end up with 7.185 times 10 to the 24th. So in your calculator, you need to enter any number with an associated power of 10 in parentheses. Otherwise, your calculator will not 
will not give you the answer with the correct power of 10. It will give you an answer that's orders of magnitude off. Did that make sense? Any questions on any additional questions on this example? Okay, so let's keep going and let's let's try let's try a few more ideas. So using the atomic mass and the AMU conversion factor, we can calculate the atoms of an element in a sample of that element. So in this case, we're asked to find how many atoms of hydrogen are found in three grams of hydrogen. Okay, so we're going from grams of hydrogen and then we want to get to atoms of hydrogen. Okay, what is our stepping stone? What intermediate unit can we go through? What is our intermediate unit that relates atoms and mass? What is, what is our intermediate unit? AMUs. Yep, exactly right. Okay, just as a reminder, if we look at hydrogen, it has a mass of 1.007 AMU per atom. Okay, so now let's write out our equalities, just like our typical unit conversions. So we know that there are 1.67 times 10 to the negative 24th gram is equal to 1 AMU. And we also know that one atom of hydrogen is equal to 1.007 AMUs of hydrogen. Again, your atomic masses are just obtained from the periodic table. Uh, so they're different units. They're different units, but AMU can, can be used to represent molar mass. Think of AMU as an alternative to grams. Don't worry, we'll tie this all together back to grams and allow you to read masses from the periodic table in grams. We just have to go through a few intermediate logical steps first. So we're going from grams to AMUs to atoms. So we start with 3.0 grams of hydrogen. And if we're going from grams to AMUs, what units do we need to have on top? What units do we need to have on top? If we're going from AMU. Grand, yep. So in one AMU, we have 1.67 times 10 to the negative 24th grams. And if we're going from AMU to atom, what units do we need to have on top? atoms. Yep, exactly right. And we know that in one atom of hydrogen, there is 1.007 AMUs of hydrogen. Grams cancel, AMUs cancel, and we're left with atoms of hydrogen. So let's punch that into our calculator really quickly. So we have 3.0 over 1.67 over one, so 3.0 divided by 1.67 divided by 1.007. And that in turn gives us 1.78 times 10 to the 24 atoms of hydrogen which we then round to two sig figs as 1.8 times 10 to the 24 atoms of hydrogen. Does this example make sense? We're just combining our two conversion factors. So really you identify your initial units, you identify your final units, and then you figure out what conversion factors do I need to cancel my starting units and give me my ending units. Does that make sense to everyone? Any questions on this example? 
If not, let's continue on. And let's try to show in the second example, we're asked to figure out the mass in grams of 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of hydrogen. It's an interesting number to choose, and there's a reason for that that we'll talk about in a moment. So we're going from atoms of hydrogen, and our end goal is grams of hydrogen. Our intermediate stepping stone that we know right now would be AMUs of hydrogen. So again, recalling our periodic table, we know that one atom of hydrogen is equal to 1.007 AMUs of hydrogen. We know that one AMU of hydrogen is also equal to 1.67 times 10 to the negative 24th grams of hydrogen. Now that we have our conversion factors established, let's write out our initial number, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of hydrogen. Okay, and now since we're starting from atoms and going to AMU, what units need to be on top? What units are we going to have on top in this case? AMUs of hydrogen. Yep, exactly right. So we have 1.007 AMUs of hydrogen, and on the bottom we'd have atoms of hydrogen. Okay, so for our second conversion, we're going from AMUs of hydrogen to grams of hydrogen. So then, what units would we need on top? And don't be shy to provide a response verbally or in the chat. Let's so what units should we have on top? If we're going from AMU to grams, what units do we want on top? Grams, exactly. So we have 1.67 times 10 to the negative 24th grams of hydrogen for every one AMU of hydrogen. Okay, atoms cancel, AMUs cancel, and we're left with grams. Wonderful, exactly as we want. Okay, so let's enter this into our calculator. So in this case, we get 10.12 times 10 to the negative first, which simplifies to 1.01 grams of hydrogen. Any questions on this example? We're just combining our conversions from AMUs to atoms and from grams to AMUs. The logic associated with these mass to mole conversions is identical to the logic that, logic that you use in unit to unit conversions. Because fundamentally all this is, is a unit conversion. Any questions? Okay, let's keep going now. So here's the periodic table once again if you need a reference. And let's try to calculate, and I'd like you to calculate, and this will be posted on the corresponding problem solving Canvas quiz later today. And I'd like you to answer the question, how many atoms of nitrogen are in 140 grams of nitrogen? And I'll pull up the periodic table just so that way you can see everything you need to. And then let's spend about three to four minutes on this problem, and then we'll come together as a group to discuss. Please don't be shy to message me your responses via the chat feature or via Canvas message, and you'll have an opportunity to reattempt these problems later today through the Canvas modules.
If there are any questions at all, don't be shy to ask. And don't be shy to message me using the public or private chat feature in Canvas with your proposed responses, so that way I can provide feedback. I'm seeing reasonable responses so far in the chat. Let me punch this into my calculator just to be sure. Yep, exactly right. So the responses I've seen so far in the chat are perfect. Let's try to get a few more responses and then we'll discuss this problem. So we see some reasonable responses in the chat. Just make sure that your units are canceling and that when you enter your values into the calculator, you keep the power of 10 grouped with the number in parentheses. So let's now discuss this example. Um, so we found in the periodic table, if we, if we went up to nitrogen, the number below nitrogen is 14. 14.00, that's convenient, that's for sure. Okay, so then we're starting off reading through this problem. We wanna go from grams of nitrogen to atoms of nitrogen. And our intermediate stepping stone will be AMUs of nitrogen. So then let's write out some equalities. We know that in one AMU of nitrogen, we have 1.67 times 10 to the negative 24 grams of nitrogen. We also know that one atom of nitrogen is equal to 14.00 AMUs of nitrogen. And one thing I just want you to keep in mind for the purposes of sig figs, these conversion factors from AMUs to grams and from, gram, from atoms to grams, or atoms to AMUs, sorry, these are exact numbers. They have a really large number of sig figs, so they're never going to constrain the precision of your measurement. So when you look at atomic masses, when you look at conversion factors, remember those are exact numbers. Okay. So we have 140 grams of nitrogen. Okay, we're going from grams to AMUs. So what units need to be on top? AMUs, right? So one AMU of nitrogen. And now critically, what units need to be on the bottom if we're converting from grams to AMUs? What units do we need to have on the bottom? I really want you to think in terms of units because if you place your units correctly, the problem will solve itself almost. Yes, so we need units of grams on the bottom. 
So in one AMU, there's 1.67 times 10 to the negative 24th grams. Okay, if we're going from AMU to atoms, we know in one atom of nitrogen, there is 14 point, there are 14.00 AMUs of nitrogen. Grams cancel, AMUs cancel. We're left with atoms. All is right with the world. So punching this into your calculator, you want to make sure this 1.67 times 10 to the negative 24th is in parentheses. Okay, this is how you often get calculator errors in your setup. So we're going to take 140 divided by 14 divided by 1.67 times 10 to the negative 24th and that in turn gives us 5.988 times 10 to the negative 24th. Now looking at this number, looking at our input number, how many sig figs does this input number have? How many sig figs does our starting number have? Two. So then we're going to round our answer to two sig figs. So that gives us 6.0 times 10, whoops, to the, oops, one moment, let me just double check. 5.88 times 10 to the positive 24. Because when we move this power of 10 up, if we want to set it up as multiplication, we end up with a positive power of 10. Here we go. Any questions on this example? Again, Keep the number and the power of 10 together in your calculations. Um, so is the exam how we took the quiz? So if it'll tell us if we need to put the units or not and yes. whether it needs to be mm -hmm. in scientific notation or not? Yes. So by default in Canvas, the majority, the Canvas doesn't accommodate scientific notation very effectively. Um, so in some cases, you'll, you'll likely deal with um, just long form numbers. Um, but I may ask you to submit like a photo of, of um, or select from multiple choice possible answers in scientific notation. Uh, but yes, you will be asked to specify in Canvas. You'll be told when I want to see the units, when I want to see the power of 10, et cetera. Mm -hmm. OK, thank you. So let's keep going now. Let's try to do a few more examples. So let's really practice this idea of using and going from particles, atoms, to mass. So let's tackle the following two examples. Let's spend about five minutes on these two examples. In the first case, you want to figure out the mass of a number of atoms of sulfur. And in the second example, I'd like you to figure out the mass in grams of a number of atoms of bromine. So in the first case, you're calculating the mass in AMUs. The second case, you're calculating the mass in grams. So let's spend about five to six minutes on these two examples. And don't be shy to unmute and ask some questions, to ask questions using the chat feature or um, to, to message me your responses in Canvas as a private message or a public message for the class to discuss.
and we'll discuss in about another five minutes. And don't be shy to message your proposed response in the chat or Okay, let's see. So I'm already getting a few responses in the chat for these two questions. Allow me to enter the data into my calculator and I'll be able to provide some feedback in a moment. Okay. So the responses I'm seeing for the first question look quite good. The mass and so for the second example, All the responses I'm seeing in the chat so far look perfect. Let's spend about another three minutes on this question. Let's try to get a few more responses in the chat, but I'm really pleased to see how well this class is adapting to the material after additional practice. And if there are any additional questions, don't be shy to ask them in the chat or unmute and ask your questions verbally. And we'll discuss in about another minute and a half to two minutes. So I see a large swath of perfectly correct responses in the chat feature. So let's now discuss this problem and just create our formal instructor solution. So if we look, if we look up sulfur, whoops, one moment. Sorry about that. So if we look up sulfur in the periodic table, we have a mass of about 32 AMU per atom, okay? In this problem, we are starting with the atoms of sulfur and we are trying to calculate the AMUs of sulfur. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. So, you know, we know that there are 32 AMUs of sulfur for every one atom of sulfur. So starting off, if we have 2.33 times 10 to the 16th atoms of sulfur. We know that if we're going from atoms to AMUs, we know that there are 32 AMUs of sulfur per one atom of sulfur. Atoms cancel. And now all we have to do is punch this into our calculator. And as the class has very astutely pointed out in their responses, that gives us 
7.456 times 10 to the 17th AMUs of sulfur, which we in turn round to three sig figs to give us 7.46 times 10 to the 17th AMUs of sulfur. Perfect. And almost all the all the response, actually all of the responses I got for this question one were exactly perfect, which is quite encouraging. Let's look at this next example. We have to figure out the mass in grams of a certain number of atoms of bromine. So we're going from atoms of bromine to some intermediate unit to grams of bromine. Our stepping stone will be AMUs of bromine. If we look at the periodic table, if we look at the periodic table for bromine, just really quickly, we see bromine's mass is 79.90. Okay, we'll need that for later. So then, first and foremost, we know one atom of bromine is equal to 79.90 AMUs of bromine. We also know that one AMUs of bromine is equal to 1.67 times 10 to the negative 24th grams of bromine. Perfect. So now we have all the information we need. So let's write down our starting value, 3.4 times 10 to the 12th atoms of bromine. Okay, we know if we're going from atoms to AMUs, we're going to need to have AMUs on top. So we have 79.90 AMUs of bromine per one atom of bromine. Then we're going from AMUs to grams, and we know that we have 1.67 times 10 to the negative 24th grams of bromine for every one AMU. Okay, atoms cancel, AMUs cancel. We're left with grams. So let's now punch that into our calculator. And that in turn gives us 453.67 times 10 to the negative 12th, which we then write as 4.5367 times 10 to the negative 10th grams. We then round to two sig figs, which gives us 4.5 times 10 to the negative 10th grams. Does this example make sense to everyone? Any questions on this example? When we're trying to find the AMU, sometimes on the periodic table, there's like two values. Which value do we use? Um, so on the exam periodic table, I'll, I'll give you, you'll only see one. Um, you can use either. They're within experimental error. Uh, well, let me, let me rephrase. Using one of those values or the other uh, from the given periodic table will not substantially affect the end result of your calculations. Um, so you can use either. There, um, in cases where I want you to calculate the mass to a high number of, of sig figs, I will give you the exact atomic mass or exact molar mass that I want you to plug in. Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you. Okay, so we've done a few problem solving exercises. Uh, let's now talk a little bit about how we can calculate atomic mass if we know the mass of our sample and the number of atoms. So let's do an example. A new element is discovered that is a mass of 3.2 times 10 to the second AMU for 15 atoms. So what is the atomic mass? So just using unit analysis here, atomic mass is equal to AMU per atom. And if I know the units, it tells me exactly what to do. 
I'm going to take my AMUs, which is 3.2 times 10 to the second AMUs over 15 atoms. Now let's punch this into our calculator. And this is where, if you have your scientific calculator, it'll save you a ton of grief. This in turn gives us 21.33 AMU, which we then round to two sig figs, so 21 AMU. Does this make, oh, whoops, whoops, whoops. I have, this is AMU per atom which in turn gives us 21 AMU per atom. Any questions on this example? Calculating atomic mass? If not, let's take a look at the following example. Uh, it, will, it won't necessarily, it doesn't have to be a whole number. It's just we rounded it to a whole number because we were rounding to two sig figs. And that's a very good question to ask. As you'll actually see in this next example, it may not be a whole number. So let's take a moment and let's look at the following example. And I'd like you to spend about three minutes on it given and the number of atoms had a total mass of 398 grams. I'd like you to tell, calculate the atomic mass, and I'd like you to tell me what element are we dealing with? So you can message me your responses in the chat, and I find it's often easier to type the answer to the second question in the chat, um, and that tells me everything I need to know. So, Let's spend about three minutes working through this example. Don't be shy to message me your responses in the chat and or ask questions in the chat or ask your questions verbally. And don't be shy to message me your proposed responses in the chat. Or if you have any questions, don't be shy to ask questions during this session. And we'll discuss in about another two minutes. Let's try to get a few responses in the chat before we discuss.
I'm already seeing some reasonable responses so far. Let's try to get a few more responses and we'll discuss in about one minute. Let's try to get a few more responses and then we'll discuss in about 30 seconds. Just to give everyone enough time to formulate their own solution and compare their work in solving this problem to the solutions work. Okay, so. Let's talk through this example. So for our atomic mass, if we want to know the atomic mass, we need the AMUs per atom. Okay, so with that idea in mind, we're gonna convert our atoms into, sorry, we have the atoms already, so let's put a check. We're gonna convert this mass in grams to AMUs. So we have 398.7 grams. We're going from grams to AMUs. And we know that in one AMU, we have 1.67 times 10 to the negative 24th grams. So let's punch that into our calculator. Let's punch that into our calculator. And that in turn gives us 238.74 times 10 to the 24th AMU that we round to 2.3874 times 10 to the 26th AMU. We retain all of our digits so far. Now we have all the information that we need to calculate our atomic mass. We put a bar for our mass in AMU of four because our starting number has four sig figs. So for our atomic mass, we have 2.3874 times 10 to the 26 AMU over 1.50 times 10 to the 25th atoms. Okay, so punching that into our calculator. That in turn gives us 15.916 AMU per atom, which we in turn round to three sig figs, which is 15.9 AMU per atom, which suggests that we have a sample of oxygen. As that's the, the closest atomic mass. Does this example make sense to everyone? Any questions on this example? If not, let's continue on with the next portion of this exercise. And let's talk about an extension to this idea of atomic mass, which is molecular weight. So molecules are obviously composed of two or more atoms. Compounds are composed of two or more different elements. So the mass of a molecule or the molecular weight is the sum of the atomic masses of all atoms in that molecule. So you take the mass of the atom times the number of atoms of that element. Molecular weight can also be colloquially known as molar mass or molecular mass, depending on the textbook and the instructor. 
I'm partial to molar mass, mass per mole. Helps you see the units. So the number of atom of each atom of each element in a molecule is given by the molecular formula subscripts. So from the formula, you can figure out the number of atoms of each element in that compound. So let's, let's do an example. So let's calculate the molecular weight of the following molecules. So chlorine, Cl2. So the mass of chlorine, we have 35.45 AMUs per chlorine atom. We have two chlorine atoms. Where do we get this two from? Well, let's show that. We have a subscript of two. So that in turn tells us we have two chlorine atoms. And that in turn gives us a molar mass of, so there are two chlorine atoms in one chlorine molecule. Atoms cancel and we're left with 70.5. 90 AMU per chlorine molecule. This last part is just me being very particular about the units. Suppose we're dealing with a compound now. So in this case, we take the mass of sodium, which if we look in our periodic table, would someone like to volunteer looking at their periodic table what is the mass of sodium? What is the mass of sodium? What is the atomic mass of sodium? 22.9. Yep, okay, perfect. So we have 22.9 AMUs per sodium atom. We have two sodium atoms. Okay, continuing on with this logic, continuing on with this logic, for sulfur, we have 32.0 AMU per sulfur atom, and we have one sulfur atom. Okay, and then plus 16 AMU per atom. Let me make some space down here. So let me just rewrite these terms down below. So we have 22.9 AMU per sodium atom times two sodium atoms plus 32.0 AMU per sulfur atom times one sulfur atom plus 16.0 AMU per one oxygen atom. And how many oxygen atoms do we have? How many oxygen atoms do we have? Four. Four, exactly right. Okay, so if we punch this into our calculator, if we punch this into our calculator, adding up each of our atomic masses, we have 22.9 times two plus 32 plus 16 times four, which gives us a molar mass of 141.8 AMU per sodium sulfate molecule. So we can calculate the molar mass for any molecule given the formula. Does this make sense so far to everyone? Okay, so let's continue on and let's look at an interesting example where we have an isotopic species. So oxygen 18 has a mass of about 18 AMU per O18 atom. Let 
the mass number is about equivalent to the atomic mass for most isotopes. So if we wanted to calculate the molar mass or the molecular weight of H2O18, we know that we have 1.007 AMU per hydrogen atom, and we have two hydrogen atoms plus and now here we know that we have 18 AMU per oxygen atom, in this case O18 atom, and we have one O18 atom. And if we punch this into our calculator, if we punch this into our calculator, we get a molar mass equal to about 20.014 AMU per H2O18 molecule. So isotopes are handled exactly the same way you handle normal elements. The only difference is their masses are a little bit, are based on the mass number. Is everyone comfortable calculating molecular weight and molar mass? Does these examples make sense? Well, to test our understanding, to apply what we've learned, let's look at the following examples. And I'd like you to calculate the molecular weight for the following molecules. So let's take about two to three minutes to work on this example and then we'll come together as a group to discuss. And if you have any questions, don't be shy to ask. I'm already seeing some reasonable responses for the first molar mass calculation. And now let's try to focus on calculating the molar mass of our second, second compound. But the responses I see so far look perfect. Let's spend around an, another two minutes on this example. And if there are any questions, again, don't be shy to submit your proposed responses, questions, or comments in the chat so we can discuss and provide feedback.
seeing a lot of reasonable responses in the chat so far. Let's spend about another minute on this example and then we'll discuss. Okay, so let's discuss these examples. So first and foremost, O3, which is known as ozone. So we have 16 AMU per one oxygen atom. And we see very clearly that we have three oxygen atoms, which in turn give us 48 AMUs of oxygen. So for barium phosphate, barium phosphate, so for barium we have 137.3 AMU per one barium atom. We have a total of three barium atoms. For phosphorus, we have 30.3 nine AMUs per every one phosphorus atom. And we have a total of how many phosphorus atoms do we have? How many phosphorus atoms do we have? This is important just to make sure you're counting things correctly when looking at the formula. How many phosphorus atoms do we have? Two, perfect. Okay, that's good. For oxygen, we have 16.0 AMU per one oxygen atom times eight oxygen atoms. And if we punch that into our calculator, we get the following result. We get for our final mass as 601.7 AMU per barium phosphate molecule. There may be some slight variation depending on how many sig figs you carry through for your atomic mass. Just for completeness, let's do another example to address some questions students may have. So looking at ammonium carbonate, let's spend about another minute and let's calculate the molar mass of ammonium carbonate. Yes, I will tell you when it needs to be a whole number. By default in Canvas, Canvas will accept typically whole numbers only. Um, so you'd wanna convert your number in scientific notation to a whole number, just so that way Canvas can accept it with no issues. So let's look at this next example. And given what we've seen from our molar mass calculations, which were perfect so far, let's do one more example in the next minute and a half to two minutes. And then we'll discuss this next example for the molar mass of ammonium carbonate momentarily. And everyone's getting much faster about this. It's very good to see. And once we get a few more responses in the chat, then we'll discuss.
Okay, so let's talk about this example. So we have 14 AMUs per nitrogen atom. We have a total of two nitrogen atoms. We have one AMU per hydrogen atom. And we have a total of eight hydrogen atoms. For carbon, we have 12 AMU per carbon atom. And we have a total of one carbon atom. For oxygen, we have 16 AMU per, one, per oxygen atom. And we have a total of three oxygen atoms. So if we punch this into our calculator, that in turn gives us 14 times two plus eight plus 12 plus 16 times three. That gives us a molar mass of 96 AMUs per ammonium carbonate molecule. Okay, wonderful. So I've seen everyone's quite comfortable calculating molar mass. And now let's try and think a little bit about how can we express the number of atoms in terms of quantities that we can actually measure. So the mole is our chemist's idea of a solution to express these particles in terms of quantities that we can actually measure. So the masses of atoms and molecules are very small. Now we handle quantities on the scale of grams. And as a result, we need to look at a group of molecules or atoms in order to have a reasonable total mass of those atoms, right? We handle things on the scale of grams. Atoms are on the scale of 10 to the 24th grams. So let's look at a really large number of atoms. And if we have enough atoms in our group, we can actually weigh that group of atoms. We can actually start to think about those groups of atoms in terms of quantities we can measure. So the analogy I like to use, we count eggs in dozens. So 12 eggs per dozen, or in general, 12 things per dozen. So for example, if I say I have two dozen eggs, how many eggs do I have in two dozen? I know this seems silly, but, but bear, bear with me because this really highlights an important point, yeah. There are 24 eggs. So we have two dozen eggs, and we know that there are 12 eggs per one dozen. And that in turn gives us 24 eggs. Now I could just as easily, I could just as easily replace eggs if I said two dozen uh, atoms, for example, how many atoms would that be? Two dozen atoms would be? And, and don't, don't freak out just because it has atoms being referenced. It's still two dozen of them, so it would be 24 atoms. Okay, so as we can see, we can count atoms in groups and we can give those groups special names like a dozen. Well, by that same logic, by that same, same principle, we can count very large numbers of objects using moles. Um, not the subterranean creature, although the spelling is exactly identical in some cases, but it's a unit of counting, just like a dozen. So a mole, instead of a dozen being 12, a mole represents 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd things. A mole of atoms is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. A mole of molecules 
is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. This number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, is known as Avogadro's number, or abbreviated capital N, lowercase capital A, which corresponds to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Now, what is the point of all this? Why does it matter? Why do we care about counting things in terms of moles? Well, we can get the mass of a mole of atoms or molecules in terms of grams per mole if you multiply the mass of a molecule by Avogadro's number. So what we can do is we can express molar masses and atomic masses in terms of grams by counting a large number of atoms. Okay, so for example, for hydrogen, we know the mass of hydrogen is one AMU per hydrogen atom. We know that there are 1.67 times 10 to the negative 24th grams per AMU. And we also know that there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of hydrogen per one mole of hydrogen. Atoms of hydrogen cancel, AMUs of hydrogen cancel. And if we punch this number into our calculator, we see one AMUs of hydrogen per one atom of hydrogen is equal to one gram of hydrogen per one mole of hydrogen atoms. So the beautiful thing about Avogadro's number is it allows us to, looking at the periodic table, directly read off the mass in terms of gram per mole from the periodic table. So the molecular weight in gram per mole is about equal to the molecular mass in AMU per molecule. So if we look at the periodic table, for example, for oxygen, that 16.0 can represent 16.0 AMU per hydrogen atom, or it can represent 16.0 grams of hydrogen per one mole of hydrogen hydrogen atoms. So we can express groups of atoms in terms of moles. And because of that, we can now count a mole of atoms and get a quantity that we can actually measure on the balance. And I need to make a fix. This should be oxygen. I had hydrogen on the mind for my previous example. Anyway, so the mass in AMU per atom is the same as the mass in gram per mole, and you can read it directly from the periodic table. Does this make sense to everyone so far? Is everyone comfortable with this idea so far? So for the majority of this next chapter, we are going to be handling moles because moles are quantities that we can actually measure and handle on a day-to-day -day basis. We can handle a mole of atoms or portions of a mole of atoms. We can't very easily manipulate and weigh single atoms. Okay, so in mass to mole conversions, so there's a general scheme that I like to, to show. It's a little problem solving guide and so to go from atoms and molecules to moles, we use Avogadro's number. So Avogadro's number is our conversion factor. To go from atoms and molecules to moles, we are going to divide by Avogadro's number. Oops, one moment, allow it a second. Oh, sorry about that. Give me one moment to reset one note. Okay, so for mass to mole conversions, I like to create a little guide sheet that's color coded. So to go from atoms and molecules to moles, 
what we're going to do is we're going to divide by Avogadro's number. If we want to go from moles to atoms and molecules, we're going to multiply by Avogadro's number. If you're ever unsure what to do, just check the units to be sure. We won't worry about this mole one to mole two conversion just yet. If we want to go from moles to mass, we're going to multiply by our molar mass, also known as the molecular weight. If we want to go from mass to moles, we're going to divide by our molar mass. Okay, so with this procedural guide in hand for step-by-step -step conversions from mass to moles, Let's start off with just the basic conversions here. So we're asked to figure out the moles of iron and 33 grams of iron. Well, first I'm gonna to need to go to my periodic table and I'm gonna need your help here. For iron, what is the molar mass of iron? What is the molar mass of iron? What number do you see below iron's symbol? What is the molar mass of iron? 55.85, yep, that's good, okay. So we're trying to go from grams of iron to moles of iron, and we have a direct route. So we have 33.0 grams of iron. We know from this molar mass that we have 55.84 grams of iron for one mole of iron atoms, okay? So if we're going from grams to moles, what units need to be on top? What units need to be on top? If we're going from grams to moles, moles, yep. So in one mole of iron, let me make this color coded in blue just so that way we have consonants with our previous color coding method. So we have one mole of iron for 55.84 grams of iron. The grams of iron cancel. And now we can punch this into our calculator. So we have 33.0 divided by 55.84 and that in turn gives us 0 0.591 moles of iron. So as you can see, we did divide by our molar mass to go from mass to moles. I really like the unit analysis method. It makes sense to me. It's very clear. Um, and it's very easy to check your work. Any questions on this example? Any questions on this example? If not, let's continue on and let's look at a molecule. So it's asked what mass of carbon dioxide is found in 1.55 moles of carbon dioxide? Well, now we're gonna have to do some searching here. So the mass of carbon we found previously was 12.00. The mass of oxygen was 16.00. So if we're calculating the molar mass of carbon dioxide, we take the mass of carbon, which is 12.00 gram per mole of carbon times one mole of carbon plus 16.00 grams per mole of oxygen times two moles of oxygen and that gives us a molar mass of carbon dioxide of 44.00 grams per mole of carbon dioxide. Now we're ready to set up this problem. So we're going from moles of carbon dioxide to grams of carbon dioxide. So starting off with 1.55 moles of carbon dioxide. If we're going from moles to grams, we're going to want grams to be on top. So we have 44.00 grams per mole of carbon dioxide. Moles cancel. 
And in effect, we have multiplied by our molar mass. And all we have to do is enter this into our calculator. So we have 1.55 times 44. And that in turn gives us 68.2 grams of carbon dioxide. Does this example make sense to everyone so far? So we're just combining the skills that we've learned throughout today's lecture, calculating molar mass, using the molar mass to calculate the mass of a compound, and everything fits together. Any other questions I can address? Okay, so let's continue on now. And I'd like you to attempt the following pair of examples. Let's spend about five minutes on these two examples. I'd like you to tell me what mass of carbon is found in 2.5 moles of carbon. And then I'd like you to tell me how many moles of C6H6 are found in 156 grams of C6H6. And we'll discuss this example in about five minutes. And don't be shy to message me with your proposed solutions or unmute to ask questions. Seeing a lot of reasonable responses so far. They're all perfectly spot on. We'll spend about another two minutes and then we'll discuss this example. But overall, all the, all the responses I'm seeing in the chat look spot on. So let's discuss this example now. So we're asked to figure out the mass of carbon in 2.5 moles of carbon. So we're trying to go from moles of carbon to grams of carbon. We know for 2.5 moles of carbon, looking at our periodic table for carbon, we have 12.00 for our molar mass. So from 2.5 moles of carbon, we know that there are 12 grams of carbon in one mole of carbon. So let's apply that conversion factor. So we have 12 grams of carbon in one mole of carbon. And that in turn, gives us, if they're punching it into our calculator, 30.0 
let me rewrite this number to the correct number of sig figs. That gives us 30.0 grams of carbon. Perfect. So let's look at this second example. We're asked to figure out the moles of C6H6 in 156 grams. Okay. So we know that for C6H6, so carbon has 12.00 grams per mole. Hydrogen has 1.00 gram per mole. So to calculate the molar mass of C6H6, one moment. So to calculate the molar mass of C6H6, we know that we have 12 grams per mole of carbon. Allow me one moment just to reset this one note parse. One second, allow me one moment just to reset one note. Okay, so continuing on with our molar mass calculation. So we have 12 grams per mole of carbon. And in C6H6, we have six moles of carbon. For hydrogen, we have one gram per mole of carbon. And in C6H6, we have Oh, sorry, one gram per mole of hydrogen. And in C6H6, we have six moles of hydrogen. Adding this together, our molar mass of C6H6 is 78 grams per mole of C6H6. Okay, so if we know that we have 156 grams of C6H6 and we wanna calculate the moles, we write down our initial value of 156 grams. And to go from grams to moles, we're gonna divide by our molar mass. So in one mole of C6H6, we have 78 grams. That in turn gives us two moles of C6H6. And we're done with this example. Any questions on these two problems? Any questions on these two problems? If not, let's continue on with the next few examples. So let's try to combine um, our rules for nomenclature with our rules for calculating and performing mass mole conversion. So in this case, we're asked, what is the mass in gram of, cal of a calcium phosphate sample that has 3.2 moles of calcium phosphate? Okay, so we're going from 3.2 moles of calcium phosphate to grams of calcium phosphate. Okay, so now that we, oh, um, just to, to go up to the previous answer, just to answer a question in the chat, it was two moles of C6H6 for the previous problem. Did that address, did that address the question in the chat? Perfect. So, now that we have our following scheme in place, um, for calcium phosphate, let's talk a little bit about dissecting the name. It's an ionic compound, so we have calcium 
two plus, phosphate has a charge of PO4, three minus. We cross our charges and that gives us Ca3, PO4, two. Wonderful. Now we have to calculate the molar mass of calcium phosphate, which is equal to 40.0 grams per mole of calcium times three moles of calcium plus 30.9 grams per mole of phosphorus times two moles of phosphorus plus 16.0 grams per mole of oxygen times eight moles of oxygen. And that gives us a molar mass of calcium phosphate equal to, and if this calculation seems like repetition, it's because you've actually done this before. So just to make this calculation easier on everyone, um, you've actually seen this calculation before and we've actually done this calculation explicitly previously. This gives us a molar mass of 309.8 gram per mole of calcium phosphate. Wonderful. Now to go from moles to grams, if we have 3.2 moles of calcium phosphate, we're going to then say that there are 309.8 grams per every mole of calcium phosphate. Oops, one moment, sorry. Sometimes there is a memory issue when setting it up. Let me just reshare the screen. Here we go. Okay, here we go. So we have 309.8 grams per mole of calcium phosphate. And if we punch that into our calculator, if we punch that into our calculator, after we multiplied our moles of calcium phosphate by the molar mass of calcium phosphate, you get 3.2 times 309.8, which gives us 991.36 grams, which we then round to two sig figs of 9.9 .9 times 10 to the second grams. The only thing that's new in this problem is that you had to figure out the formula from the name. Any questions on this example? Any questions on this example? If not, let's take about three minutes and let's work through the following problem. In this case, we're asked how many moles of lithium sulfate are found in 165 grams of lithium sulfate. So your first order of business is to figure out the formula for lithium sulfate using nomenclature rule. And we'll discuss this in about three minutes. Uh, 990 is okay, but the reason why I wrote it in scientific notation from the previous example is just to make it very explicit that the answer has two sig figs. But yes, um, the long form number is also okay. I'm already seeing some reasonable responses in the chat. Spend about another minute and a half to two minutes on this problem. Let's try to get a few more responses and then we'll discuss momentarily.
Let's try to get a few more responses in the chat. And we'll discuss in about 30 seconds. Okay, so let's discuss this example. So lithium sulfate, so we have a lithium plus sulfate is SO4 two minus. We cross our charges, that gives us Li2SO4. Next, let's calculate the molar mass of lithium sulfate. The molar mass of lithium is about 7.0 grams per one mole of lithium times two moles of lithium. For sulfur, we have 32.0 grams per mole of sulfur times one mole of sulfur plus 16.0 grams per mole of oxygen times four moles of oxygen. And if we punch that into our calculator, if everything was done correctly, we have seven times two plus 32 plus 16 times four. That in turn gives us 110 grams per mole of lithium sulfate. Now, if we have our grams of lithium sulfate and we want to calculate the moles of lithium sulfate, we write our initial quantity of grams, which is 165 grams. And then we know, based on our conversion factor, in one mole of lithium sulfate, there are 110 grams. So punching this into our calculator, punching this into our calculator, we have 165 over 110. That in turn gives us 1.5 moles of lithium sulfate. Any questions on this example? Any questions on this example? If not, let's continue on. So let's look at atom to mole and molecule to mole conversions. So to go between atoms and molecules and moles, so to go from atoms to moles, we're gonna have to divide by Avogadro's number. To go from moles to molecules, or moles to atoms, we're gonna to have to multiply by Avogadro's number. Now for atomic species, for atomic species, Avogadro's number allows us to convert from moles to atoms. For molecular species, for molecular species, Avogadro's number allows us to convert from moles to molecules or from moles to formula units. Remember, formula units is a unique term used for ionic compounds. So let's do an example. And let's suppose we're asked how many moles of lithium are in 2.0 times 10 to the 22nd atoms of lithium. So in this case, we're going from atoms of lithium to moles of lithium. And we know that in one mole of lithium, mole to atoms, we have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of lithium. Okay, so then let's write out our starting quantity, which is 2.0 times 10 to the 22nd atoms of lithium. 
And now following our guideline to go from atoms to moles, we're gonna divide by Avogadro's number. Moles need to be on top. So we have one mole of lithium for every 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. And if we punch this into our calculator, that gives us 0 0.33 times 10 to the negative first, which we then round to and rewrite to 3.3 .3 times 10 to the negative second moles of lithium. And I just prefer to handle these numbers in scientific notation as we're dealing with very large or very small numbers. Any questions on these examples? Any questions on these examples? Okay, so let's try to apply what we've covered and let's do one more guided example. So in this case, we're asked to calculate how many moles of sulfur are in a known number of atoms of sulfur. So starting off, we have 1.2 times 10 to the 24th atoms of sulfur. And we know from our previous conversion, if we're going from atoms to moles, we're gonna to need to divide by Avogadro's number so in one mole of sulfur, we have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of sulfur. Atoms cancel. So punching this into our calculator, 1.2 over 6.02. This gives us at the end of our calculation, 2.0 moles of sulfur. Let's do one more and let's try to calculate the formula units. And I want you to think of formula units the same way that we think of molecules, except for an ionic compound. So we're asked to calculate the formula units of sodium carbonate in 1.29 moles of sodium carbonate. So we're going from moles of sodium carbonate to formula units, which is just like molecules of sodium carbonate. Okay, so we have 1.29 moles of sodium carbonate. And then we know that there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. In this case, instead of molecules, we'd write formula units of sodium carbonate per one mole of sodium carbonate. Canceling our moles, we end up at the end of our calculation that we have 7.765 times 10 to the 23rd formula units, which we then round to our final answer of 7.77 .77 times 10 to the 23rd formula units. Does this example make sense to everyone so far? Any questions so far? So, 
Let's now try to apply what we've covered and I'd like you to tackle the following two examples over the, these next three minutes. And this will be our last example set for today. And don't be shy to message your responses in the chat or to ask any questions in the chat or verbally. And we'll discuss these examples in about, in about two to three minutes. I'm already seeing some reasonable responses in the chat. Let's try to get a few more and then we'll discuss these two examples. So let's discuss these examples. So first things first, we're asked to calculate how many atoms of nitrogen are in 0 0.25 moles of nitrogen. So we're going from moles of nitrogen to atoms of nitrogen. So we have 0 0.25 moles of nitrogen. And we know that there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of nitrogen in one mole of nitrogen. And that in turn, if we punch that into our calculator, gives us 1.5 times 10 to the 23rd nitrogen atoms rounding to two sig figs. Looking at our second example to calculate the moles of aluminum oxide given the molecules. So we have 3.01 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of aluminum oxide. And we know that in one mole of aluminum oxide, there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules and punching this into our calculator, we get 0 
500 moles of aluminum oxide. So any questions on these examples? So we'll continue this lecture next class session or in laboratory if time permits. We're gonna take a quick 45 minute break for laboratory and I'll see everyone in laboratory at 1245 just to give everyone a little bit of extra time since we went slightly over time today. Hey professor, did you discuss yeah. anything in the first few minutes of um, class? I would like didn't get the email. Um, nothing. Nothing beyond the fact that the practice exams have been posted and the actual exam has been posted in camp. Okay. And um, the actual exam, are we taking that as a class or is it just individually? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yep. And um, as for those quizzes that were due yesterday, are you going to um, go over them or is there a possibility that we could go over them together? Oh, sure, sure. If, if, there, if, if time permits, if, if we have some spare time at the end of laboratory, I can certainly go over them. Okay, cool, yep. cool, cool. Thank you. Wor worst case, we can, we can, I'll, well, we can shoot to go over them tomorrow so that we have some time before the exam to prep and look over them. Yeah, definitely. They were pretty good practice, but I just feel like some of them I'm still like iffy about. Yeah, for like, sure. Like I'll we'll be them. posting the, the problem solving exercise exercises as keys oh okay yeah, yeah yeah right right okay cool 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 thank you mm -hmm. awesome